man in the middle attacks are especially bad attacks because you as the end user or the server don't actually know that someone's sitting in the middle and watching everything that you're sending back and forth. The idea is that the bad guy would somehow inject themselves into the middle of your conversation and in some cases even modify pieces of that data as it goes back and forth over the network. The idea is that the bad guy would be able to set up some mechanism that instead of you talking directly to a different server would somehow send that traffic to a middleman. And all of that traffic would flow through the middleman, both going to the server and back to the workstation. It would be able to see everything going by. One common way to perform man-in-the-middle attacks on a local subnet is with something called ARP poisoning. This is when you are sending ARP messages that are not coming from the right IP address. They're actually coming from the man in the middle. And you're now pretending that you are the end station. There's lots of ways to do this in many different operating systems. This happens to be a screenshot from a program in Windows called Kane and Abel, where it has built right into it the ability to do ARP poison routing. Once that software gets into the middle, it simply watches all the traffic going by. It pulls out email passwords for you. It pulls out website passwords for you. It tells you exactly where the end user is going and what they're doing. You can see everything. So you can see ARP poisoning can be a very effective method of getting into the middle and performing that man in the middle attack. Before we show you how to poison or spoof that ARP, let's look at the ARP process itself. Let's say we are this workstation, 192.168.1.9. Here's the MAC address for that workstation. And on my network is a router. And anytime I need to go to the internet, I'm going to go to that router, which happens to be 192.168.1.1 as its IP address. And you can see the MAC address of that router is here as well. These MAC addresses become incredibly important when somebody tries to perform this ARP spoofing or this ARP poisoning. Now, normally, I don't know the MAC address of that router when I'm ready to talk to the internet. I first have to determine that by sending an ARP out to the network. It's a broadcast where I ask anybody out there, if you're 192.168.1.1, please respond back with your MAC address so that then I can begin using you and sending traffic to you to go out to the internet. That device, the 1.1 router, is going to see that broadcast and send back the MAC request there saying, hi, I'm 1.1, and my MAC address is 00095BD4BBFE. And it's going to be received by the 192.168.1.9 workstation, and it goes into a local cache in memory on this workstation. That way, we can keep that particular value for an extended period of time and constantly use that if we ever need to talk to 192.168.1.1. We don't have to keep performing those ARP requests. We already did that. So let's keep their name and their address right here in our cache. The problem happens when a bad guy gets onto the subnet. And that's an important part to consider when you're looking at ARP poisoning or ARP spoofing. You have to be on the local subnet. Someone can't perform this ARP spoof from some other subnet somewhere else on the network or across anywhere on the internet. Our bad guy would have to be on that same subnet. Here he is as 192.168.1.14. And you can see the MAC address of this particular workstation. So he wants to now become the router. And he wants to make sure that all the traffic from this laptop flows through him first before it ever goes out to that router. So what he's going to do is craft a packet and pretend that the packet is coming from 192.168.1.1. He spoofs this router, and he says, oh, I'm sorry, my MAC address is now different. It's no longer 00095B, et cetera. It's now the same MAC address of the bad guy, A-A-B-B-C-C-D-E-E-E-F-F. -E 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 and when the workstation sees that, it says, oh, you've changed. I'll go ahead and update my ARP cache. And now all the traffic that would normally be going to my router, I'm now sending directly to this 1.14 address, who then, of course, will send it on his way because he performs the same ARP poisoning and ARP spoofing to the router that's on the other side. And now the ARP spoofing is complete. The bad guy has told this laptop that he's the router. And the bad guy has told the router that he's the laptop. And now all of the traffic flows through. And he can view all of the traffic that's going back and forth between those two devices.